Hey everyone, um, coming to you today from the great outdoors in New Zealand in the middle of lockdown. <laughs> um, I know this is some pretty interesting times that we're living through and I thought um, I would bring you on a little walk, show you a little bit of our great outdoors whilst we have a chat. So um, lockdown in New Zealand I've realised is quite a bit different to, I think, what people are calling lockdown in the rest of the world. So let me break it down for you. In New Zealand, we're not allowed to leave the house. Uh, the government's put in place this lockdown for a four week period. We're currently about two weeks in. Most of us are expecting it to run longer. But um, lockdown means you're not allowed to leave your house, except for uh, going for a walk and getting that outdoor physical activity um, in your local area. So you're not allowed to drive out to a trail and go for a run or any of that. Nope, it's in your local area. Uh, and you're also allowed to leave if you are um, going for an essential service. And so um, that's largely the supermarket or a, um, or a medical uh, clinic. Um, businesses are closed. Everyone's closed except for essential services, unless you can work from home. And essential services means a supermarket, a medical centre, and emergency services. So everybody's largely at home at the moment. Um, and I think it's been really interesting because, you know, obviously we're watching the stats and we're watching the numbers of cases and things. and. And, and that's all kind of an interesting data piece. Uh, but what I found is that there's actually a couple of really interesting impacts on us as New Zealanders and our collective psyche. And for those of us who are not New Zealanders and are, are sticking it out in, the, in, the, um, in, in this country. So first up, I don't think anybody's exactly thrilled with the idea of being locked in their homes for four weeks. Not particularly thrilled with the government taking a heavy-handed approach, but what I think it has done is it's given us some consistency. So as soon as this lockdown period was announced, we went from crazy, how do we respond? How do we, you know, how do we, what, do we keep working? Do we shut our business down? All of a sudden, as soon as the lockdown was announced, everybody got a bit of consistency and so businesses were able to say right we've got a four week period we need to plan around anyone who can work from home uh, will but we know that we are shutting our doors for the next four weeks and so that consistency meant that as a business owner we can plan around it um, it meant that the banks could start to plan around people who would not have an income and we can um, we can put in place some measures that mean that people don't lose their houses. Uh, you know, it gives us that consistency and that anchor. As I said, we're not necessarily thrilled about it, but at least it gives us a, a pillar and an anchor to plan around in a time of incredible uncertainty. So that was kind of my first takeout. And then my second takeout in watching all of this has been that... We didn't choose, you know, in, in taking that approach and in taking that, um, that path of how do we bring stability into a time of incredible uncertainty and, and change. I find it interesting that the, the decision was made to stop, to, to stop everything to pause, to hit the pause button. How often in our businesses do we kind of hit crisis mode and we feel that we need to keep working through it and we need to work it out and we need, you know, we keep pushing through. Well, in this case, we chose to hit the stop button and go, you know what? All bets are off. We're gonna stop for four weeks, minimum. Then we're gonna reassess what it looks like and we'll, we'll go from there. And um, I guess the, the result of all of that has been this interesting effect on the psyche of New Zealanders that I'm speaking to and those who are in New Zealand for this period. And that is first, that we are, because we're able to stop for that period, we're able to reassess what's important. So in New Zealand, we've prioritized getting our bubble 
um, secure. So that means you know you've got food in the cupboard, you're not leaving your house frequently, you're trying to minimise your your time outside of outside of the home and um, and you know fewer shops to the supermarket and, and less exposure. So it's meant a reassessment of what's important. Who's with me in this core team? How do I kind of secure my location and make sure that I can be self-reliant for a period of time? And then what, what are the important things? Well, it's back to connection with family. It's back to connection with friends, checking up on each other and making sure that um, you know, people are getting through this period together. So that's, that's, I think that's, that's not necessarily as a, as a direct result of only choosing the path that New Zealand chose. I think, you know, everybody's doing that. But that's certainly been forefront for the people I'm talking to. Uh, second up, far from it being the sense of, oh, we just have to sit still for four weeks and then we'll go back to normal. What it's actually triggered is people are reassessing what normal should look like. So New Zealanders, I think, have uh, very quickly got to this point of saying, well, is this what we want to keep doing? Uh, now, some of you know I'm in the bottom of the South Island uh, in one of the most tourism-heavy areas of the country. Uh, so this, this little part of the world is going to be quite heavily impact by, impacted by closed borders and lockdowns and all those sorts of things, right? But... It's really interesting to see that very quickly people have got to this point where they're not accepting going back to the status quo and going back to the way things were as a foregone conclusion. Because we're reprioritizing about what's important, we're actually saying, well, do I want to go back to that hustle and bustle? Do I really want to go back to exactly the way that we were running things? Or is there something more or different or less than what I was doing. And I think that for me has been a really interesting question. You know, we see the dolphins returning to Venice. We see the Himalayas are now visible because of the lack of air pollution. And what I'm hoping is that this period gives everybody a chance to reassess what's important. What are we actually doing here? Uh, learning a little bit more self-reliance, which is great. You know, I think that's a great sort of safety net. And we'll talk about self-reliance another time. Uh, but also not just accepting normal as going back to where we were before this. We've, we've recognised that things have changed substantially and we have this opportunity to choose. We have this opportunity to choose to go back into something and, um, and I guess recreate and redesign something that might be more sustainable, both for us physically, emotionally, mentally, also for the planet and environmentally. Uh, and and to choose what's important. So I'm hoping that out of all of this, we're going to get to a point where people are um, opting out of the rat race a bit more. That you know, productivity is no longer the only thing that we're looking for. It's actually about value to customers. It's about um, doing the work that's important and meaningful and impactful for people. And it's about working in a way that is healthful for us and our well-being um, and working with people we love. So it's a whole bunch of rambling for you this morning, but I hope wherever you are that you are safe and secure and looking after your loved ones and um, hopefully you're also getting a little bit of outside time. But if not, here's a little bit of New Zealand for you.